if you are looking for 79 and above in your test and let's say in your last exam or in the mock test you scored less than 50 is it a good idea to continue practicing or should you look for alternatives this is what i'm going to discuss in today's video if you're interested keep watching if you're new to this channel my name is roman i'm founder of roman pt and in this video i'm going to discuss whether it is possible for anyone to get more than 79 or not and if it is possible what can be done to get it in the shortest possible time so let's get it started our question for today is can anyone score 79 and above or not and the answer to this question is yes anyone can get more than 79 provided that they are careful about a few factors which can affect their score in the test and be able to gain some skills which can help them to reach that place that's what we are going to discuss in detail now so the first thing here is Remember that it's not just about tips and tricks. This is one of the misunderstandings many people have. If I learn certain tricks, then I'll get the score. Tips and tricks can enhance your score by a few points, but they cannot make your score jump from 40 to 90 overnight. Actually, you need a balance of skills and strategies. And what that means is you need to learn certain skills and make sure that you also know certain tips and tricks so that you can use these skills in the right way and without wasting much time you can get your score. So how can we do that? What are these skills? What should you learn for your test? And does it mean that you need to have some in-depth understanding of English language or we can actually make it more efficient by focusing on certain types of skills only and then apply certain tips and tricks. So let's have a look at that. When it comes to a skill, for this test, you have to have a basic understanding of four different skills, which are vocabulary, grammar, spelling, and pronunciation. Anyone preparing for this test must have a good understanding of these four skills, must be able to use these skills in the right way. Okay, when it comes to skills, we all know that learning these things are actually quite difficult. I'm a non-native speaker myself and I had to learn all these skills one by one. And because of that, I have a first-hand experience of how confusing and tiring learning these skills can be. But at the same time, because of my experience of teaching English for the last 14 years, as well as teaching PT for the last five years, what I know is you don't need to learn all the words in English and you don't need to learn all the rules in grammar. That means you need to be focused. There are certain things you have to learn and there are certain things you have to master. So when it comes to vocabulary, for example, you have to learn collocations. This collocation list is provided by Pearson. It has 2,500 different collocation combinations that you have to go through. You don't need to memorize any of them. You just have to go through them a couple of times until you start feeling more familiar with them. Once you feel familiar, that's how you'll be able to use them in the exam and get the score you desire. And then you also have to go through the academic word list, which has 570 words. If you go through these words, it will be easier for you to understand the question, understand the recording, and then give appropriate response. The second thing is in grammar, you don't have to learn all the rules of grammar, but you have to make sure that you have a basic understanding of three important aspects of grammar, and they are tense, voice, and parts of speech. Make sure that you know about the basics of these three topics in grammar especially tense. Make sure you know all 12 different types of tense, their structures and where they are used. If you have a good understanding of this, it will help you to provide an appropriate answer to certain questions as well as it will help you to answer the questions such as fill in the blanks, fill in the blanks reading and writing and dictation more effectively. It can also help you in fill in the blanks of listening. Parts of a speech is extremely important when it comes to answering fill in the blanks question in reading. We have eight different parts of a speech and you need to have a basic understanding of at least four of them, which are noun, verb, adjective and adverb. So how much time perhaps it will take if you have to go through all of this? I think just around one hour. And then after that, you just have to revise it a couple of times and you will not have any problem. So whenever somebody mentions grammar, we feel uh, scared because we feel like grammar is really complicated and perhaps we'll not be able to cover all of them or understand all of them. And as I said, you don't have to understand everything, but you just have to make sure that your practice, your approach is focused and you have a good understanding of these three topics at least. And then after that, you can start applying them while answering the questions. And for this, you can take help of your tutor if you are going to an institute or otherwise there are many videos on YouTube which you can watch and learn from them as well.
The next thing I mentioned was the spelling. Spelling is quite crucial because there are certain questions where unless you spell the word correctly, you don't get any points at all. For example, in fill in the blanks of listening and dictation, you don't get any points for your answer unless all the words you have written have been correctly spelled. Because here, every word carries one point. All of them should be correctly spelled. And in AC writing and summarizer spoken text, you get two points per question for spelling. So you can see that it can play a major role in your exam when it comes to getting high score. Because dictation is one of the most important questions in your exam. And in this question, you have to spell all the words correctly to get points. It's really important that you spend some time in enhancing your spelling score. Now, again, there are so many words. So how can you know which words you need to know how to spell? And then again, you can make it focused by focusing on these three types of words. The first is frequently used words in PT. If you have a list of the frequently used words in PT, you can go through that list and make sure that you can spell all the words correctly. For the first time, what you can do is you can go through the words and mark the words that you find difficult or confusing to spell. And then in the second round, you can just focus on those words. You also have to have a good understanding of most common misspellings in English because these are the words Pearson tends to use in fill in the blanks and dictation. So if you have a good understanding of these common misspellings, it will help you again. And then there can be a few words which can be difficult for you to spell. Everyone can have their own set of words which they find difficult to spell. So you should spend a little time thinking about this kind of words. Which words do you find difficult to spell or you always get confused, although nobody else finds it confusing? For example, in my case, when I'm spelling out certain words, I always feel confused despite teaching English for such a long time. The reason for that is we all have our own individual problems and we just need to be aware of them so that we can find a strategy to tackle them. Then pronunciation. Pronunciation is a major barrier for many students to get a score in speaking and in listening because speaking and listening are so much integrated with each other. If you do not perform that well in speaking, you can't get a score in listening as well. And because of that, poor pronunciation often results in poor score in speaking as well as in listening. But how should you practice it? Do you need to know all nitty gritty details of pronunciation? Do you have to have perfect pronunciation skills? No. How long can it take to improve your pronunciation? Again, if you really want to improve your pronunciation to the level of the native speaker, you definitely have to spend a lot of time. But fortunately for PT, you don't need to do that. Because again, there are only fixed types of words that Pearson uses in its exam that you need to learn how to pronounce. Most of these words come from the consonant clusters. If you have no idea about that, make sure that you learn about this before you start working on your pronunciation. Otherwise, you'll waste a lot of time learning the pronunciation of words, which will never be asked in your exam and which will not help you to get this code. So for the pronunciation part, I have divided words into two categories. The first is commonly tested words in speaking, and the second is commonly used words in speaking. So in commonly tested words in speaking, I'm focusing on the questions like read aloud, repeat sentence, answer short questions, and read a lecture. In these types of questions, I have to answer the question as Pearson wants. That means there is a fixed answer for all these questions. And in a way, what Pearson is testing is whether I can say these words in the right way or not. Otherwise, I'll not get points. So what I need to do here is, for example, in our center, what we have done is we have gone through all these questions, extracted the words that we see more often in these question sets, and then we have prepared a list of words that students can go through and then prepare themselves. At the same time, we have also prepared a list of words that are used in describe image for describing the image. For example, while describing different types of line graphs, pie charts, or tables, People tend to use only a set of words. So we make sure that people, our students can pronounce these words without any problem. And if they do that, even if they have problem with other words, it will not have any impact on their score in the exam because they know how to pronounce the important words that they have to use. So again, for pronunciation part as well, you don't have to know how to pronounce all the words. You just have to know how to pronounce certain types of words, words which they are going to ask and words which you have to use. This way, you'll have a fewer words to practice and because of that, it will be easier and faster for you to get your target score. So these are the skills you need, but just having a skills is not enough. Again, this is another mistake many people make. Because I'm good in English, I think I'll get a score in PT, so I don't need to prepare. This is a very common misunderstanding and 
It is the reason why many people with good skills fail in the test. Because the second step now is to learn the tips and tricks which can enhance your score. Let's discuss some tips and tricks which can help you to enhance your score with the help of the skills you gained from the previous discussion. There are five things you need to consider. First is loopholes and algorithm. The algorithm Pearson uses for automatic scoring has some problems. And because of that, we can exploit those problems and get the score. Some people call it cheating computer. I call them loopholes and algorithm. So you need to know in which questions Pearson's algorithm is not perfect and we can manipulate it. Second, we also need to know the scoring criteria so that we know how questions are scored and we focus on those areas which can get us more points. Third, we have to find out which questions are important and which are not so that we can spend more time on important questions and get more scores and do not waste time on unimportant questions. So this applies to both practice as well as the exam. In practice, we need to spend more time on important questions and during the exam as well, we need to spend more time on important questions and spend as less time as possible on unimportant questions. Templates are really good for certain types of questions and we have to decide in which question types we can simply use templates and save time. And the last one is past question. In Pearson's exam, it uses past questions a lot and because of that, we have to know in which types of questions practicing past questions can be helpful and in which types of questions it's not necessary. So let's go through all of them one by one, starting with loopholes and algorithm. Pearson's algorithm has problem in questions like speaking and writing where users can give various types of answers. Or in other words, the same question can be answered in thousands of different ways. Because of that, Pearson's algorithm struggles to understand certain types of answers. And on the other hand, it easily gives highest possible score for certain types of answer, even if technically they are not perfect. So which are these types of questions where we can manipulate the algorithm? In speaking, these questions are retail lecture, describe image, and answer sort questions. If you learn certain tricks in these types of questions, you can easily fool the computer and get the score you desire without developing the skills of English required to use it effectively. Which means if you are preparing for this test, for the speaking part, learn the tricks which can beat the computer. For this, you can refer to some of the videos I have made earlier. Or if you are one of our students and you still feel like, I think I need to polish on this area, get in touch with us so that we can help you with these skills. On the writing side, summarize written text, summarize spoken text and essay. All these three questions can be answered perfectly even if we don't have perfect skills. And again, you need to learn these loopholes so that you can get your score if you have certain deficits in your skills. Then the scoring criteria. Scoring criteria is important to know for all the question types, but more important for repeat sentence and write from dictation. Because the tricks that we use in repeat sentence and write from dictation depend on the scoring criteria. Because of that, although the algorithm does not have that many loopholes in these questions, we know the scoring criteria itself is not perfect or not perfect in the sense that uh, it cannot detect all your problems. It can only look at certain areas of your performance and because of that, we can easily manipulate the system and get the score we desire. So make sure that you are aware of these loopholes based on the scoring criteria and try to apply them in your exam. That way you'll be able to get the score you desire in these two question types. Then templates. Templates are quite useful because they make the process of answering the question faster as well as easier. And you can use templates in certain types of questions. For example, in speaking, in retail lecture and describe image, you can easily use the templates which fulfill all the criteria uh, for getting high score. And then make sure that you have got feedback on using the template from one of your tutors or from someone who knows better than you. While using templates, just be careful about one thing. Not all the templates are equally useful or not all the templates address all the criteria of a scoring. You need to make sure that the template you are using is of the highest possible quality. And don't use template just by memorizing it. Learn how to use it. Learn how to complete the gaps in the template. Learn how to modify it according to the question type. Just copying the template from one of your friends and then using it in the exam can actually do more damage, especially if you are not aware of um, the important ideas that you need to integrate in the template. 
So make sure that while using the template, you also know how to modify it according to the question and what are the limitations of the template so that you know when not to use it. Past questions are really helpful because Pearson uses past questions a lot in its exam. But then you need to be careful not to depend too much on past questions for two reasons. First, there is no guarantee that you will get your questions from the past questions because at any time Pearson can use new question sets. And second is, practicing or memorizing past question may not be useful for certain types of questions. So in which types of questions you should practice past questions more than anything? In reading, read a paragraph, fill in the blanks and fill in the blanks, reading and writing. In these three questions, if you practice past question, not only these questions make you familiar with the exam question pattern as well as the difficulty level, sometimes the same question might appear in the exam, making it easier for you to answer these questions. Essays also repeat all the time. So going through these essays can help you um, be prepared with the content for the exam. And dictation is another question type where questions repeat a lot. So in these three types of questions, in reading, essay and dictation, I think you should spend a little time practicing the past questions, but not by memorizing it, but by gaining the concepts required to answer these questions, learning the tips and tricks to answer these questions. Questions also repeat in speaking and writing as well. For example, in retail lecture, describe image, answer short questions, as well as summarize written text, summarize spoken text, and essay writing. Out of these six questions, except for essay writing, in all the other five questions, it's not a good idea to memorize the answer or spend too much time with the past questions because all these five question types can be easily answered by using certain tips and tricks. So rather than wasting your time memorizing the answers, you can actually learn the tips and tricks so that no matter what they use in the exam, you can answer them. All right, so this is all about what you can do to get more than 79 in the exam. This is just a brief discussion of what should be done. But of course, everyone has their own style and their own um, strengths and weakness. You need to identify them and prepare your plan accordingly. That's what we do at Roman PT. We make sure that we know you. We know you in terms of your strengths and weakness so that we can find the opportunities for you so that we can tell you the right kind of tips and tricks that can work for you. Always remember that what works for others may not work for you. So you have to be really, really specific when it comes to learning new strategies for your exam. At the same time, English is such a vast language. So you have to be really focused when you are trying to learn skills. You need to create a balance between your skills and tips and tricks so that you can easily get your desired score, even if that is more than 79 or for that matter, even 90. If you found this video useful, please like the video and share it with your friends. And if you do not want to miss future videos, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. Until my next video, have a good time and all the best.